Church in Matthews, North Carolina. I'm Pastor Jennifer Ginn, and I'm delighted to welcome you to worship on this beautiful Sunday. I'm glad we started this morning with a familiar and loved hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, because that will serve as a kind of theme for us during worship today. Connect again with us on YouTube or through our Facebook page or website. And perhaps when we begin to gather again in the future, you will join us in person and we'll get to welcome you face to face then. There's info on connecting with us and an email address you can use if you want to get in touch with a pastor on the final slide of our worship video. And so um, catch that if you would like to be in touch. Happy 4th of July weekend. We are celebrating this weekend independence in a time when, ironically, many of us don't feel very independent, but rather hemmed in by the requirements of the pandemic and troubled by the unrest around racial injustice and political tension and just being weary of isolation. This morning's appointed psalm is so helpful uh, in this time, and so I'd like to share with you a verse from it. And it is Psalm 45. You can find that in your bulletin if you have one or uh, on your own in your Bible. Psalm 45, verse 14. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. God is here. Faith holds us together. We lean into the promises of our Lord. And now as we begin worship, we take time to reflect on our own human frailty and the times we have failed to be the people that God made us to be. It's good to be honest about ourselves and to receive again God's promise and God's forgiveness. So join me in that now. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin together. Reconciling God. We confess that often we do not trust your abundance or the power of your presence in our lives. Doubting that you provide enough for all, we hold back what we could freely give. By our carelessness, we disturb the balance of your good creation. In fear and distrust of others, we fail to practice the generous welcome you have given us. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may be renewed in faith and live as you taught us to live. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now I want to share with you, tell you, 
this morning's gospel passage from the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter. Hear now the story. Jesus said to the crowds, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. John, John came, neither eating nor drinking. And they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. <sighs> Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you. I thank you because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, this was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom he chooses to reveal him. Come to me then, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Loving God, open our ears to receive your word. Open our hearts to receive your peace. In Christ we pray. Amen. When I was growing up in the Southern Baptist Church, Jesus' invitation at the end of today's passage was a frequent theme. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. That was the language of the time. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. As a child, I had no idea what a yoke was. But I knew what a yoke was. And when those verses were read, that's what I heard. Yoke. My mom made lots of cakes when I was a kid, pound cakes especially. I'd watch her cracking eggs into the bowl of her electric mixer. She never dropped in the whole egg. She separated the eggs very carefully one by one so only the yolk would plop into the mixer bowl. The yolk was gold. It was the specialist part. So when I heard the story uh, as a kid about taking on Jesus' yoke, I always thought he was giving away the gold, the best part of himself, to all us weary people. You could push the yoke idea even further. Whether you fry the egg or boil it, and we won't even think about scrambling because that clearly ruins the yolk. Whether you fry it or boil it, you have to crack it gently so as not to break the yolk if you're frying and to get that stubborn, ornery, hard to remove shell off the right way if you boil it. You gotta get to that gold, to the yolk. 
getting to the goal, the core, the center, that's not only a challenge with eggs, it's a challenge with life. <laughs> Have you got a teenager in your house? When your teenager spills out a drama that unfolded with her friends, she's going to carry you through every detail until you insist, get to the point, just tell me what happened. And actually, you may have been tempted, I certainly have, in these last few months to take that same tone with the whole world as it comes at you. With the pandemic, for example. We're tempted to say, what's the real problem here? What do all those numbers really mean? Where's the yoke? Or about worshiping together in person. Who's calling the shots here? When are we going to open? What about all those other churches that are already worshiping in person? Are we sure we can't just try an indoor worship? Or with the unrest swirling around the racial justice wound that was opened again by the recent deaths of black men and women across this country, what can we do? How can we go back 400 years and fix this? Where's the yoke? And the questions that this weekend celebration bring to mind. What are we celebrating, really? What does slavery and its long coattails in our country have to say about how free we really are? Where's the yoke? Getting to the gold, the yoke, what really matters? It's a huge and frustrating challenge right now. Which brings me to the story we heard about Jesus today. I think Jesus himself was struggling to uncover the yoke, the center. He got caught up in all the expectations of his first century Jewish community. He couldn't possibly wear all the hats they wanted to put on him. He couldn't please them all. Now, I'm sure none of you have ever had that problem, right? <laughs> That's the point of the story, and it's odd opening trying to please everyone. When Jesus says those folks are like children in the marketplace challenging one another, that thing about one side playing the flute and the other side refusing to dance, one side starting a loud wail of a rant and the rest just staring at them. I thought about my childhood again, watching my little brother with his wind-up doggy who prance around gleefully and make him laugh until it stopped. And someone had to wind it up again quick before my little brother started wailing. You gotta be quick to satisfy a two-year-old. Jesus did have a point with that story, and it wasn't about two-year-olds. It was about the Jewish community. It was about his own people who were so hard to satisfy. John the Baptist had come to them like a prophet, fasting and holing up in the wilderness, and they didn't accept him. Jesus had come to them, sharing food and drink, reaching out to everyone, not just the elites, and they didn't like that either. What did they want? And the part you didn't hear this morning, because it was not in the appointed verses for today, that part had, intens had intensified Jesus' frustration. He had taken, you see, his message into his own hometown and neighboring villages, and they'd shut their doors in his face. And his response in these verses I didn't share was a rant that would have put my little brother's tantrums to shame. Wait a minute. Did I just say that Jesus got angry, frustrated? Yeah, I think maybe he did. Maybe it was the human and the divine in him exchanging words. Whatever it was, Jesus was up to here, up to here with expectations, closed doors, and attitude, and he let it rip. No wonder he needed to stop and pray. Wouldn't you? And I guess the praying 
calmed him down. In my mind's eye, I see him sitting down. That's what rabbis did to teach. They sat. Sitting down among the people, opening his arms, smiling in that moment when he said, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. In that moment, he is the yoke, the gold, the center. Nothing else matters. He wasn't the Jesus they had wanted, the one they could wind up to dance to their tune. He was the Jesus who wanted them. He offered not what they demanded, but what he had to give them. Leave your expectations behind and come to me. Give me your burdens and I'll give you rest. Here's where the yoke comes in. That word I never understood as a child. It wasn't an egg yolk at all. It was a wooden brace around the neck of an animal. This one came to me on loan from Mr. Hugh Klutz in our congregation, and I understand that it's very likely 150 years old, quite valuable. This would fit across the neck of an animal, and oftentimes a larger yoke, yoke <laughs> would yoke together two animals. This was a small one that was probably used just to steady one, but there would be a brace that would go all the way across both of their necks and their heads would fit here, and there would be ropes tied to the yoke that would pull the plow, and the farmer would stand behind the plow and guide it through the furrows. The best strategy was to yoke a stronger, older, more experienced animal with one that was new, young, uh, and that animal that had been in that field many times could guide the younger one as they walked. So when Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, he's not saying, you be the beast of burden and I'll steer the plow. No, he's saying, be yoked with me, side by side. I'll show you the way. I've been there before. And it gets better. The yoke you see, was understood in another sense, too. The yoke was the particular teaching of a particular rabbi, one perhaps you might have been hoping to sit with and learn from, one who would eventually call you his beloved student. And Jesus was offering that chance to the very ones who had come close to running him out of town. Quite amazing. In this heavy time of so many expectations, so many conflicting truths, as many of us struggle to find the gold, the yoke, the true way forward, in this heavy time, Jesus makes that very offer to you. Come to me. Sit at my feet. Start your day and end your night in my company. I am the yoke and the yoke, the gold and the guide. When even the intelligent and the wise cannot find the way, trust me, travel with me, learn from me, and by my side find the way of life. I don't know about you, friends, but to me, that invitation sounds like gold. Thanks be to God. Amen.
this day to Ron and Pam Hancherit for leading us in the two hymns that we were able to sing this morning. It's so wonderful, even though our choir cannot be back together in person, to have um, various members of that group and others to lead us in song. Um, it's been great to have that. So thanks to Ron and Pam and to uh, Dr. Larry Stratemeyer, our new director of music. Would you join me now in prayer? Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your good news in a hard time. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful, prophetic, and compassionate voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of your world and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the nations, especially the United States and Canada, celebrating their nationhood. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide our difficult conversations. Free us from any allegiances that hinder relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, despairing, sick, or oppressed. Ease their burdens, give your consolation, and free us from all that keeps us bound. We pray especially for those on our congregation's prayer list. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. I invite you now to name those for whom you are praying. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest, O Lord, and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for our words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, Creator God, Jesus the Christ, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen.